Well, I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie, and today we're going to be, I'm going to be, uh, ranking and reviewing the uh, guitar solos on Frank Zappa's Chunga's Revenge album. Taking a break from the 73-74 era, which I plan on finishing probably next week. Uh, but I'm going to tackle Chunga's Revenge because two days from when I'm filming this, um, the newest, latest Frank Zappa, Zappa Family Trust release is going to come out, Funky Nothingness, and... Um, that is material that was largely recorded at the record plant in 1970 in Los Angeles. And two of the songs on here, uh, Transylvania Boogie and uh, Chunga's Revenge, um, are from those sessions. And so we might get fuller versions, alternate versions, alternate takes, the complete versions, you know, uh, some version of that stuff of... Uh, Transylvania Boogie and Chunga's Revenge might be on that release. Uh, it's also interesting because uh, Chunga's Revenge is one of those Frank Zappa releases where he has a bunch of material from different bands and he kind of cobbles it together to make uh, an album. Um, there's also material on this album from the Hot Rat Sessions um, that has been already released on the Hot Rat Sessions. And there's material on here from Road Tapes Volume 3, a live show. Um, and he uses that for, um, he uses two songs on there, uh, King Kong and Chunga's Revenge, to make the Nancy and Mary music. Um, so this is a really weird release that as we get these like post-Zappa releases after, you know, the ZFT stuff, we start to get all the different areas where he's like originally recorded this and how what he cobbled it together from. So anyways, um, five solos on here. Uh, Nancy and Mary Music has two. There's a lot of Frank Zappa guitar playing on this. He's doing some really nice playing in a couple songs that don't have solos in particular, so I didn't count those. But the guitar playing on this, for the most part, is really, really nice guitar playing uh, by Frank. Um, very bluesy sound. Kind of the, this is like the best of his, where he's going in the 60s, and he kind of peaks right around this area. Then he would sort of like experiment and head off in different directions after this. But I think this is a good a good sample of what that early sound sort of ultimately went to and became. Um, yeah, and some of the stuff like Transylvania Boogie, that was a song that would come out of a Help I'm the Rock when the, the mothers did it live in the 60s. You know, so that's also another thing that has weird origins that's now being released here, recorded at the record plant, though the original mothers used to do it as a, I guess it was an actual song. Um, I'm counting Transylvania Boogie. Um, it's weird because it is definitely like a, an instrumental that's designed for the guitar, but I guess there is legitimate guitar soloing in here, so I, I'm going to count it. Um, but anyways, that's enough. I'm gonna go through them, I'll put the five on the screen when I'm done, and then I'll show you where this one ranks among the other 26 that I've done um, elsewhere on this channel. So anyways, uh, number one is the Road Lady, or number five is Road Ladies. Nice bluesy, little short little solo in the middle. Frank's doing a lot of playing throughout this. It's all pretty tasty. It's a good little bluesy jam. Um, uh, the solos does what it's supposed to do is a nice little blues jam. Frank's getting some nice bends in there. Nice little energy, nice tight, terse solo, but effective. Um, yeah, just works for road ladies. Just really good. Um, yeah, uh, that's number five. Uh, number four is the second solo in the Nancy and Mary music. Um, this is the one that comes from King Kong. Um, it's a little more cluttered, a little more chaotic, a little more him just kind of riding a groove with the band kind of going crazy around him. Um, just really good energy, really good feel. This is Frank at his most like jamming with the band best right here. Just really good energy. Um, that's number four. Number three is the Nancy and Mary music solo number one. This actually comes from Chunga's Revenge. Uh, this one's a little more, it's only a minute long. The other one's only like a minute and a half. They're both kind of short and a little bit frustrating. At least the second solo leads like when it ends, we kind of ride out that jam. Um, but this one cuts off pretty abruptly, but still, the minute that we get, I think it's a minute and two seconds exactly that we get. Um, it is so good and just so tasty. And like, it's very like jammy, but it's also relaxed. And Frank's just bending those notes and it's kind of bluesy. Um, yeah, it's just, just really, really good. The cut is kind of brutal, but like the fact that the cut is so brutal, is kind of sort of a testament to how effective this one minute and two second solo is. But it is so nice. 
And the fact that it gets cut off is really frustrating, but we have the entire jam, the entire thing on uh, Road uh, Tapes Venue 3. Uh, it's the clap, Chunga's Revenge. At the end of that is where this solo drops. Uh, but yeah, really, really good. Um, yeah, just really nice, really tasty, really just frank. Yeah, really frank in that solid, heavy blue sound that he has. Uh, really good. Um, uh, number uh, two is the actual Chunga's Revenge solo that's on this album. Um, the best solo probably on this album, well, maybe the second best solo, um, that's not Frank, is the Ian Underwood, like electric saxophone wah solo that kicks off Chunga's Revenge. That thing is fantastic. Uh, but then Frank gets a sort of response solo, starts off with a nice sort of a cleaner tone, probably the cleanest tone on this before he kind of, you know, changes effects and gets a little bit grittier and dirtier and nastier towards the end of it. Um, still, it needs to be longer. Um, it also kind of just cuts off and goes right into the clap and it's like, oh, please don't do things like that. Um, but it's a really nice solo, uh, a good response to Ian's solo, which is probably the second best thing on this album solo-wise. Um, all of these are kind of in the same neighborhood um, of like energy and attack and vibe, very bluesy early 70s sound that Frank has. Um, and I think it works. Um, and then number one is the lead off track, Transylvania Boogie. Just an awesome song, awesome vibe. It's literally just Frank playing for the entire time. There are some sort of signpost changes that, you know, anytime they play this song, they eventually sort of hit and go into. So it is kind of like one of those, like, you know, we're going to jam and then we're going to do this little thing then we're going to jam some more. But the solos are great. Frank's playing is great. It's like the whole thing's like five minutes. It's just, it's like a five minute instrumental of just absolutely amazing guitar playing. And to kick off the album, it's definitely like raising the bar on this album to a height it does not reach again, unfortunately, though there are some good moments on this album. Um, I do like it. I have a video elsewhere where I completely just talk about this album. Um, but it's, it's Transylvania Boogie is without a doubt one of those really special Frank moments. And it's one of those songs I really wish Frank had kept in the rotation and it had been like the way that the, that the Grateful Dead would like drop a Spanish jam, you know, into something or like a caution jam where you're in like a, another song and like a lot of times out of he was gone, the dead would like explore and all of a sudden you're in a Spanish jam, you're in a caution jam. I think Frank should have kept Transylvania Boogie in his pocket while all of a sudden in the middle of like Inca Roads, we go into like a Transylvania Boogie jam. That would have been pretty sweet. Um, there's a timeline where maybe he does that, a multiverse. There are other timelines. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's my number one, Transylvania Boogie, easily by far. Um, and uh, on the Funky no Nothingness release, we do have Transylvania Boogie, the unedited master. Doesn't say how long it is. Really excited to see what that is. Um, we have Chunga's Revenge, take five. Don't know if it's another just them jamming on, jamming on Chunga's Revenge. So I'm really excited to hear those two things. Um, so yeah, um, but that's why I thought I would address this now because I, I wanted to listen to this getting in, in prep, in preparation for, in prep, I have to explain what that means, uh, in preparation for the release that's coming when I record this in two days. But anyways, those are my thoughts on that, um, on those solos. Oh, those are the solos right there. Those are the five. That's what they look like in black and white, in typewritten form. And then where does this album end? Fall. Falls right there, kind of what smack dabby in the middle so far, a little higher than the middle. Um, that run right there that it's below, uh, Bongo Fury, Overnight Sensation, Volume 3, Volume 5, those are all pretty close as far as the what I rank the solos. Um, but I do think each of the other ones has at least one or two solos that two solos maybe that's like up there with Transylvania Boogie where this only has one so those are able to get their their averages lifted a little more because they have some better stuff uh but yeah it's it's a pretty good release as far as guitar solos go I don't think Road Ladies is the shortest it's the one that's there just to kind of serve a purpose but it's really good and it serves its purpose really well and it's really enjoyable the guitar playing I think is fantastic on here if the cut if yes the cuts are frustrating but still it's enjoyable Anyways, that's all I got. Let me know your ranking of these solos. Um, let me know your thoughts. You know all the, how that works. Subscribe, like, comment, and go listen to music. Just listen to Transylvania Boogie. It is an absolutely ridiculously amazing thing if you've not listened to it yet, ever. That's a that's a lack of a lack of listening on your part if you've not yet done that. But anyways, thanks. Peace. Talk to you later.